Hi class, in this video what I want to talk about is constructing confidence intervals. So how we construct what's called a 1 minus alpha times 100% confidence interval for a population mean. And this is going to be uh, done using the t-distribution that we have talked about in a prior lecture. Okay, so what I want to do here is um, set this a concept of a confidence interval up with an example. Okay, so why do we need the confidence intervals, or what do they tell us? So I want to use this example talking about the SARS virus. So um, hopefully you've heard of the SARS virus, especially with everything that's been going on in the news. And um, what the SARS virus stands for, it stands for the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome. Okay, so imagine there's a, the SARS outbreak, and uh, what you wanted to do was you wanted to study uh, the, the SARS outbreak and, and study certain aspects of it. So one thing you might want to estimate is what's called the mean incubation period. So what an incubation period is, is it's how long the virus will be in your system before you start showing symptoms. And if you wanted to form, you wanted to form some strategy to combat this virus, knowing the mean, the average incubation period is really important. All right, it's an important thing to know. Okay, so how would you do it? How would you measure the mean incubation period of the SARS virus? Well, you know, the, the, we don't know too much about the SARS virus, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to collect data to measure this incubation period. So what you would do is you would take a sample, right? So you'd interview people who had the SARS virus and, and figure out their incubation period from this. So here's the deal. This, this is the data we'll be using for this example. So in a sample of 81 SARS patients, so we talked to 81 people who had SARS, it was found that the mean incubation period was 3.8 days with the standard deviation of 15.1 days. So here are just some, some statistics from this. So the sample size was 81. The sample mean from these 81 SARS patients was 3.8. So we're saying based on 3.8, or based on 81 SARS patients, excuse me, the average was 3.8 days. And the standard deviation here, the sample standard deviation was 15.1 days. Okay. So what, you know, what, what are we talking about here? Um, the value of X bar 3.8 isn't actually the real population value. So the, the mean incubation period of SARS is not exactly 3.8 days. So just from this sample, um, we got 3.8, but that's only 81 people who had SARS. Okay, so we don't, we don't know for what the real real value is. Okay, this is what is called a point estimate. So what a point estimate is, it's a single value used to estimate the value of a population parameter. So we're estimating what the what the um, what the real population mean could be with this with this point estimate. Okay, so the thing about a point estimate, it's a good single value estimate, but it's probably not the real actual population mean. So what could the real value, what could the real population mean be? Well, we can't ever know the real value. Okay, there's no way we could talk to every single person who had SARS and figure out um, what, the, what the mean incubation period is from every single person who ever had SARS. So we realize the point estimate is not the actual value, it's close, so what could the real value be? Well, what we now do is we estimate the real value of the um, population mean with what's called an interval estimate. And all an interval estimate is, is it uses a range of values to estimate the value of a population parameter. So instead of a single number here, we use a range of values. So we say, we, hey, I, I think the real mean could be anywhere between this number and this number. Okay, so what exactly is this interval estimate now that we're going to talk about? So an interval estimate in statistics is called a confidence interval. So this is what we're going to be constructing, a confidence interval. And confidence intervals are range estimates with a given level of confidence, okay? So the, the word confidence, so what is the confidence? Well, it's listed as what we denote as 1 minus this Greek letter alpha times 100%. All right, so alpha in statistics is what's called the level of significance. So the way I like to think about it, um, this is how I think about it. It helps me visualize it or understand it. Think of alpha as how often you'll be wrong. So for example, in, in this lecture, this video here, we're going to construct what's called a 95% confidence interval. And if you're going to be 95% confident in your results, okay, that means you're going to be wrong 5% of the time. Okay, right? That makes sense. If you're going to be 95% confident, that means you're going to be wrong 5% of the time. So this alpha, we just, is my willingness to how often I'm going to be wrong. Think about it that way. And that's alpha is equal to 0 0.05. I just took that 5% and changed it to a decimal. 
Okay, so what do I mean by how often you'll be wrong? Like, what does that mean in statistics? So suppose the real mean for SARS incubation period was four days, okay? Just, we don't know that that's what it really is, but just assume for now that it is actually four days. The mean incubation period of SARS is exactly four days. Well, what this means is if we wanted to construct what are called 95% confidence intervals, if we collect, collected sample size n is equal to 81 100 times, so we did this 100 different times, okay? Not just one sample of 81, but 100 different samples of size 81, and constructed 95% confidence interval for the mean, we would be right 95 out of 100 times. So the way to think about it like this is, if I constructed the interval the first time I did this, and I say, hey, look, I'm 95% confident the mean is between three three days and five days. Well, the actual mean is four, which does fall in here. So this interval is correct. We got it right. But suppose you talk to another 81 SARS patient, okay? And you construct another interval. And we say, look, I'm 95% confident the mean is somewhere between 4.1 days to 6.1 days. Well, the actual value is four days. That's outside the interval. So that is incorrect. We got it wrong. The hundredth interval we did was like, oh, okay, well, I'm 95% sure that the real mean, which is four days, is somewhere between 2.5 days and 4.5 days. Well, that's correct. So if you were to look at all hundred intervals, 95 of the hundred intervals would contain the number four, like it does in here and here. And roughly five times out of the hundred, it would not be in, in the interval. Okay, that's what a 95% confidence interval means. You're going to be right 95 out of a hundred times you do this experiment. Okay. All right. So we kind of have an understanding, or at least I've talked about uh, what a confidence interval is. So now these intervals here, I just made up. Okay. But there's an actual mathematical formula for constructing these confidence intervals. Okay. So these confidence intervals are a range of values. Okay. So these range of values have a lower bound all the way to an upper bound, and it includes all the numbers in between. Okay. So the way you find this all right, you start by taking the point estimate, well, we've already defined that, and then you add something to it to get the upper bound, and you add something, excuse me, you subtract something from the point estimate to get the lower bound. All right, what you add and subtract is what's called the margin of error, okay? So just the, the formula for this is pretty straightforward. The point estimate is we take that sample mean we got, and we add and subtract now, the margin of error is made up of two components. It's made up of a critical value and a, something called a standard error. Well, we've, we've learned about a standard error before. It was in the previous section when we were talking about uh, sampling distributions. So this critical value is a little bit new. Okay. Well, the formula here, my sample mean is x bar. We add and subtract in parentheses. I'll explain what this is, this t of alpha divided by 2, times... This is our critical value times our standard error, and all our standard error is is the um, standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, and this is a little bit of a typo, and I'll fix it in the slides, but this should be s instead of sigma. Sorry about that. So t of alpha divided by 2 is a t critical value, okay, with what we call two things so degrees of freedom, which we denote as df, and that's equal to the sample size minus 1, and an upper tail probability equal to alpha divided by 2. Now let me just show you on our slides, give me one second, here in our t table from the classroom, the upper tail probability is up here, but I'll also show you by talking about the confidence level down here, and then we had the df as n minus 1 is on the table right here. And this right here is what we've talked about in the previous um, videos. All right, so going back. I'm going to do an example where I show you all, what all these things are. Okay, so let's go back and let's do this example. So in a sample of 81 SARS patients, it was found that the mean incubation period was 3.8 days with a standard deviation of 15.1 days. So here's n, here's my x bar, here's my standard deviation. Let's construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval for the mean incubation period of SARS. Okay, 
So to construct a confidence interval in this class, we will always use this formula here. Okay, it's x bar, add and subtract the critical value times the standard error, which is the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, to get this critical value here, we're going to need to use the table. Okay, so df, the degrees of freedom, is n minus 1. Well, that was 81 minus 1, so you get 80, you're going to go to 80. And the easiest way to actually do this is I want a 95% confidence interval. So on that table, if you go to the bottom, you see confidence level. Here's 95. You look where these two intersect, and it looks like my critical value here is 1.990. Okay, so t plugging these stuff back in, 3.8 was x bar. This critical value just gets replaced with this value from the table, 1.990. Standard deviation was 15.1. Square root of uh, the sample size, sample size was 81. If you plug this into your calculator here, you will end up just getting 3.3. So I'm saying I'm 95% confident the mean is somewhere between 3.8 plus or minus 3.3 days. So the lower bound is the subtraction part. So the lower bound is 3.8 minus 3.3, which is 0.5. The upper bound is the addition part, which is 3.8 plus 3.3, which is 7.1. So I'm 95% confident that the real mean, the real mean is somewhere anywhere between as low as half a day to as high as 7.1 days. So the way you would interpret this, just using some verbiage, is I would say based on this sample, we are 95% confident the mean incubation period of SARS is somewhere between 0.1 days and 7.1 days. All right, class, I'm going to follow this up with more examples, but this was kind of a quick introduction to confidence intervals.